Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you all from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So good to see you all gathered here this morning. It's uh, wonderful to be together to worship. Um, we've got a few announcements today. So one of the first announcements we have is we've had the Hope Haven uh, Adults uh, Daycare uh, here. It's a, our day program. It's for adults with intellectual and cognitive disabilities, and their building is being renovated. They're getting new plumbing and water pipes and all this kind of stuff put in. And so they're going to be here until June, but they made all of you guys a thank you notes and uh, little, little Mayflower cups. So they've got lollipops and stuff in there. There's some up here. There's some out there. Please uh, take a little makeup home with you. They made tons of them tons of them, but it's, it's been a lot of fun to have um, folks here during the week hanging out. And yep, so I'm so glad that we were able to show hospi hospitality to them and, and they, they return it graciously as well. Let's see, we have the Deacon's uh, May Food Drive. So you'll notice that there are uh, some baskets out in the gathering space. And they are gathering things, uh, snacks and things like that for the summer sacks program for the fellowship cup. So you can take a look out there on the little sign that says what they're looking for uh, to fill those summer sacks and we would greatly appreciate it. And that's behalf of, on behalf of the deacons. And then um, family connection, basket collection, Sarah. This is Sarah Hager. If you didn't know. <laughs> so um, Family Connection does what they call a traveling basket. And it's where they connect all or they collect all kinds of things for mothers and babies. So diapers, bottles, formula, everything. And we will have that basket here during the month of May. So we don't have information about it this morning in the bulletin, but we have a whole list of things that you can purchase to donate for that traveling basket. We'll send it out in the um, weekly announcement this week, and then we'll have it ready to go for next Sunday. Um, I also want to share that uh, some of you may remember uh, Lent, maybe four or five years ago, where we did the program Lighten Up for Lent, and we met every Saturday morning to walk, and a lot of you have said how you missed that and how you wish we could do that again, and so as part of our church renewal, while Trey is gone, we're, we're thinking about ways that we can kind of reconnect as a church, especially after COVID. And so every Saturday during May at nine o'clock in the morning, we're going to meet here and go for a walk together. So we'll walk maybe 30 minutes in different trails around. And so you are welcome to join us every Saturday morning in May for walking. And then my final announcement is in the alert uh, that you, the mailed newsletter that you should have received at the end of last week, I think there's information about our summer preachers. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. And then on the back is Pastor Trey's schedule while he's on sabbatical. So it gives you the rundown on where he'll be and what he'll be doing every week. So I encourage you to look at that and we'll post it online as well. So last announcement, next Sunday uh, will be my last Sunday with you all before I go on my clergy renewal, um, Sabbath time. And so I am super excited, but we're going to have a commissioning service and my father-in-law will come and preach. And I, I think he's a, a great connectional preacher. He's, he's quite pastoral um, and he's been doing ministry. Well, he retired after like 33 years or so. So, and then Sarah and Marta are both phenomenal uh, preachers as well. So I know sometimes in the summer, uh, people are kind of to the winds up, up to the mountains, down on the beach, all that kind of stuff, doing whatever. Um, but, but make, make a point to come and, uh, and, and hear them. I think they uh, will do a great job bringing you good news. And um, yeah, and for the commissioning too. So uh, with, with that, uh, with, the, with the Sabbath time, um, so it's not a sabbatical where I'm going to study. It's actually a renewal time where I'm going to uh, connect and have intentional slow time 
uh, with God, with the spirit doing things, um, hiking 20 days on the Appalachian Trail, riding Bragg Rye. That doesn't sound like renewal, but um, I heard it's a mosey on Rag Bry, so I'm, I'm up for that. But I'm not, I'm supposed to set boundaries. So if things happen, if there's a funeral or something like that, we have uh, Sarah and Marta, who is a, a seminary student, uh, to cover those things. And Sarah will uh, play head of staff, or not play, she will be head of staff while I'm gone. And, and the grant pays to cover those extra hours that she'll be doing. So um, defer to her for, for questions and things like that, but also, defer to yourselves, right? This is a um, church member-led ministry. So I am not the head. I'm called the teaching elder. You are the ruling elders. So uh, this is your, your place. So it's a time for you to, um, to do those things, to lead, come up with your ideas, and do those things. All right, I believe that's all of the announcements that I have. Welcome uh, to our visitors here and to uh, everyone gathered. If you would take a second to sign the pew pads. Welcome to everyone worshiping online with us. And if you didn't get your communion cups, please do so. There's communion cups in the back. Kirk can get one for you if you don't have one. And if you're at home, go ahead and get something to celebrate communion with us later in the service. Thank you. Good morning and happy May Day. Please stand for the call to worship if you're able. Easter Sunday has come, but the Easter season continues. We are here to journey and talk with one another as the, as the disciples did. We will ponder what we have seen and heard, what we know to be true, and what we hope beyond hope is real. May our minds be clear, our hearts open, and our spirits renewed as we feast on the wisdom of Jesus. <clears throat> First disciples, may we be filled with wisdom, hope, love, and friendship. Amen.
The Call to Reconciliation. During the Easter season, we reflect on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. He gave us one lesson over and over before he died. Love one another as I have loved you. Please join me as we confess our unwillingness and hesitations to follow Jesus. Jesus, before you died, you prayed that we would be one and that the world would know we are yours by our love for one another. We confess that we have failed. Instead of seeking unity, we divide ourselves. Instead of seeking to serve one another, we serve our own interests. Instead of embracing the outsider, we isolate ourselves and cling to our possessions. God, save us from ourselves. Call us to join with you for forgiveness, rest, and renewal, so we have your strength to join your work in the world. Make us one, Lord, with you and the people everywhere. Let us continue to pray in silence. Hear these words of assurance of pardon. All things are possible with Christ. The old self dies with Christ and the same spirit that renewed his life renews ours. Friends, hear the good news and believe in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God, we are invited as friends to sit down with Jesus, eat the bread of life, and receive forgiveness so that we have renewed strength to love as Christ taught us. Amen. <clears throat> be seated. Join me in the prayer of illumination. God of wisdom, feed us with your word of life this day so that we taste and see that the way of Christ is sweet and fill us with, and fill us with purpose. Amen. The scripture today is Psalm 30, chapters 2 through 12. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O oh Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O oh Lord, and be gracious to me. O oh Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The words of our Lord.
Thank you for sharing that with us, for the time and the work that you put into leading us in worship today. That was great. Our scripture reading for today comes from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 17. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon, Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy God, as we gather this day to worship you, to hear a good word. Speak your words of wisdom and discernment for our lives, the way you did to the disciples. Help us discern what it means to go fishing, to eat, to be together, to love. In Christ's name, amen. So what in the world happened to the disciples? They were gung-ho about Jesus. They had followed him back and forth across the deserts from town to town and city to city. They listened to his teachings. They were a part of his healing ministry. They listened as he challenged the Jewish and the uh, Roman authorities. Uh, they saw him crucified. They saw him risen. Then they hid behind locked doors. Jesus appeared to them behind those locked doors in the upper room. And Jesus appeared and said to them, go, I am sending you as the Father has sent me. Go and continue the work we began sharing the good news of God. They were supposed to be out 
lifting up the oppressed, releasing the prisoner, setting the slaves free, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, and binding up the brokenhearted. But they didn't go. Eight days later, Jesus appeared to them again. They were still behind the locked doors. He appeared to them, let Thomas stick his hands in his side, and he gifted the disciples the Holy Spirit, and he commissioned them again to go continue the work that he had begun. And this time, they left. But they didn't get started doing the work and ministry of Christ. No, instead, they went home to Galilee, about a three to five days walk. I mean, perhaps they wanted to get out of Jerusalem because they didn't feel safe and they didn't want to sit behind those locked doors. But what did they do when they got to Galilee? They quit. They resigned. They set it out whatever you call it, but they were not doing what Jesus had called them to do. They were sitting there. And Peter said, I'm going fishing. The other said, we'll go with you. And they caught nothing. Was it exhaustion, loss of hope, loss of purpose? fear, lack of guidance. Maybe they convinced themselves that it wasn't all real. Perhaps it was all of the above. So they sat in a boat, had no luck with the fish. And they were just killing time. Time is a difficult thing to kill when there is no meaning or purpose to it. Socrates taught that the unexamined life is not worth living. I agree, but I've also learned that a life with too much meaningless time is not worth living too. The disciples used to spend hours and hours fishing. And now as they sit there on that boat with maybe too much pointless time, it lost its meaning. As we celebrate May Day, originally a, a labor movement, we know that millions of people are caught in that same time trap. In the wake of COVID-19, workers across America, professionals as well as shift workers have been rethinking the work that they do. In some cases, they've, they've decided to walk away from it all. Uh, sometimes to go to new jobs, and other times, no jobs at all. We'll just live with a little less. It's been called the great resignation. Some might call it the great reconsideration. How do I want to spend my life? Some argue that the great resignation has been driven by laziness or sloth or lack of incentives due to government payouts. There was so much money coming in that people didn't necessarily need to work. And for those who were able to collect unemployment, uh, yeah, why? Why should I? But according to the Worker Institute at Cornell University, that, that doesn't get to the root of the phenomenon. Pandemic-linked unemployment benefits expired in September of 2021. And people are still not going back to their jobs or back to work. In 2021, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, that is a hard word to say. <laughs> according to those stats, <laughs> Over 47 million Americans voluntarily quit their jobs in 2021. Another 4.7 million in January of this year, another 4.3 million in February of this year, and another 3.7 million in March of this year. Workers across America, professionals, blue collar workers, all kinds of workers have been rethinking what they do. 
my 23-year-old niece, is a perfect example of this. We sat down for a chat a few months ago when I was home in Texas, and I said, what are you up to? And she shrugged, working, whatever. But it wasn't that she said that. I mean, we get that response a lot from a 23-year-old, right? There's a song called No One Likes You When You're 23. But she, she had that glazed over look in her eyes that said, you know, is this really all there is to life? Is this it? And I've seen that look in so many people and not just the young, but all generations. Is this it? And I think that's what's happening to the disciples. When they return to gallery, to Galilee, and they go fishing, and they're in the boat. And I can see them with their sullen heads hanging low. They had been through so much, had seen so much. They had hoped that this was going to be transformative, not just for themselves, but for the world. And now they're in a boat. They're just fishing, and it's lost its meaning. Is this all there is? And then Jesus appears. Children, do you have any fish? I wonder how he said it. Children, have you any fish? Are you catching fish? It was a question within a question. Oh, fish, what do you mean by fish? We know. We, we really know. We, we know he was asking something else there. Have you found any meaning? Have you found any purpose? Something to lose your life into, something that fills your time instead of killing it. And Jesus could ask that question to any of us, right? He could ask it of us any day. And there we'd be taking care of day-to-day -day business, uh, arms full of groceries, fingers on the keyboard, thumbs on the phone, hands on the steering wheel, just going through the rhythms of our lives. Children, do you have any fish? Many people I know would resonate or do resonate with the ancient tale of Sisyphus, the king of Corneth in Greek mythology. Uh, Sisyphus had offended the Zeus, the king of the gods, and Zeus condemned him to roll a great boulder up a hill in Hades for all eternity, only to watch it roll back down again. Roll it up, roll it back down. And Jesus asked, children, do you have any fish? Are you catching meaning and purpose? And the disciples answer, no, Lord, no. They admit it. And then this beachcomber, they didn't know it was Jesus yet, uh, gives them a tip. Throw your net on the other side of the boat. A crazy piece of advice. What does it matter if you throw it on the left or the right side of the boat? But they do it. For some reason, they take the beachcomber's advice, throw it to the other side, and the nets come back full. And you may remember that this has happened before the first time the disciples were called. Have you caught any fish? Throw the net to the other side. And so they did. And it dawns on them who this person is that is asking them this question. Jesus manifests sometimes um, through strangers on a beach or in the store or friends eating dinner. How are you doing? Are you catching any fish? And Peter is so excited. Oh, Peter. Peter's a yellow lab. If you didn't know, he, he's... He's um, Mongo from like the old Bugs Bunny cartoon, you know, oh, I'm going to love him and hug him and squeeze him on Peter. And <laughs> we don't know why he was naked in the boat. It's Peter. I knew someone like that in college. It's just, and we don't know why he then puts clothes on to jump in the water. It's Peter. It's Peter. But he is so excited to see Jesus. 
And there's this charcoal fire on the beach. A charcoal fire. Remember the last time we saw a charcoal fire was Monday, Thursday on the night that Peter had denied Jesus three times. And the last time that the disciples had ate together, they were with Jesus in the upper room. Aren't you with Jesus? Peter was asked. No. But now Jesus asked Peter three questions, almost like an absolution, a chance to take back what he had said. Peter, do you philo me? Philo me. Do you love me like a brother? And you can hear Peter, kind of sorrow in his voice. Yes, Lord, you know I philo you. I love you like a brother. There are three different Greek words here for love that Jesus uses that we don't get in our translation. So Jesus asks them a second question after he says, feed my sheep. Jesus asks, Peter, do you eros me? Do you eros me? Peter, do you love me with passion and intensity? Do you really love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I eros you. He says, tend my flock. And then he asks Peter a third question. Peter, do you agape me? And Peter was hurt. And he said, yes, Lord, you know I agape you. And agape love is a totally different kind of love. This is God's love. This is covenantal love. It's, it's a love that is stronger than any emotion. It's a love that's not based on feelings. It's a love that shows itself with action, with unconditional loyalty. Peter, do you agape me? Yes, Lord. You know I agape you. Feed my sheep. And there it was. Meaning and purpose. And it took time. It took time. Peter and the disciples needed that time to sit down together, to break bread, to eat. They needed that time to talk, to find meaning and purpose. Children, have you any fish? We could all use someone to walk up to us every once in a while and ask us, how's it going? But ask us in a space where we can't just answer, it's good, and walk away. But ask us in a space where we're sitting down to break bread with one another, to challenge us to declare truthfully, is your net empty or is your net full? Oh, really? It's full? Tell me about that. Where are you catching these fish? What are you doing it? What, it, what is filling up your life? What is giving you life? Oh, your net's empty? What's got it all tangled up? But that takes time. So it's time to eat. This fall, when I return from my Sabbath time, we will begin to practice an old way of the church in these new times post-COVID. There's a movement, it's called slow church, or slow food, or slow coffee, or slow whatever. And it is about being intentional with our time and what we do. So we will resign from treating church and our spiritual nourishment like a McDonald's visit where we get our fast food fast, our way, right away, and we check off that little box and, and we feel very spiritually unhealthy. Instead, once a month, when we celebrate communion, we will take time to eat. We will create an intentional time to talk about what is filling up our nets, what is emptying our nets, the big catches, and what is snagging our lives. It will be different. 
it will take commitment. It will take uh, agape love to say, you know what, Jesus? Yes, I want to follow you. I want my life to be spiritually intentional, and I want to take time about what gives me meaning and purpose. And I know so many of you have meaning and purpose, whether it's family, whether it's the board you serve on or the committees you do. And I know at the same time, there are some days where you go, oh my gosh, this is all futile. We can have both, but we rarely take time to connect and be intentional about it. And so this will be a time for kids, for families, for the elders, for visitors, for me, for you, I believe it's needed more than ever to do things a little bit differently than the world does, not to just come in and say, are you good? I'm good. You good? I'm good. And go. It won't be fast church. It'll be a time with guided questions. Have you caught any fish? It's time to eat. May God bless my time of renewal. And may God bless your time of renewal over the summer. And I'll see you next week for a commissioning. Amen. affirmation of faith. We believe in an Easter God who transformed darkness into light, hatred into tolerance, and despair into hope. We believe God is always working for good, changing every good Friday nightmare into an Easter dream of new possibility. We believe in the risen Christ, who befriends us on our roads of doubt and worry, who touches us through song and silence, word and gesture, who calls us by name to enter the dance of life. We believe in the spirit, the hidden presence behind every resurrection, who beckons us to leave tomb-like safety and trust the gracious invitation to live joyfully. We believe the Spirit is always renewing the church 
and making us a people who practice kindness, encourage beauty, and work for justice and freedom. We believe we are an Easter people, a sign that with God, all things are possible. You may be seated. In the stories of the gospel, Jesus was always a guest in other people's homes. He was an itinerant preacher going from city to city and town to town, and he was always the guest. But here in this place, Jesus is the host, and Jesus would turn no person away who came hungering and thirsting for peace, for joy, for righteousness, anyone who needed to be tended to. He would bind up the brokenhearted. He would help the weak and the poor. So all are welcome to this table. This is the feast of God for all the people of God. Let us pray. Most holy God, we give you thanks for your son Christ. That although the world may seem like a fallen place at times, we see the hope of him risen of his life, shining light through the lives of others and proclaiming good news to all people. We know we turn away from following his way, but we thank you, O oh God, that you send prophets and preachers and friends and family to call us back to the way. We thank you, O oh God, that we are called out of our boats to sit, to eat, to break bread, to discern, and to be sent again to do the work of your kingdom, to bind up the brokenhearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. And so we pray, O oh God, for those in our lives that need to fill your love, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Help us be the one who lets you work through us. We ask all of this. In Christ's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he poured it. And he said, I tell you, this is the cup of the new covenant. It is my blood shed for the forgiveness of all sin. Friends, it is truly a mystery that Christ's body broken can make us whole and Christ's blood spilled fills us up with the spirit of life, the feast of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
special video for you today. It is our, our seniors. We have four graduating seniors. And so they, they made some videos to share. And so we're going to see that. And we, we have some crosses that, that we'll give. Um, and you'll hear in the videos why some of them aren't here. They're working. Good kids working. So, um, but enjoy this message from them. Hi, I'm Dalton Church. First, I'd like to say I'm sorry for not being able to be there with all of you guys today. Unfortunately, I have work, so I'm not able to attend, but I'd love to be there with all of you. Um, so for my future career, I'm going to be pursuing a four-year plumbing apprenticeship program with Rockway and Burlington. Um, I would like to thank the Christian Education Committee for selecting me for a, um, a scholarship. It means a lot to me and it would help. it's going to help me with my books and it's going to help me with my tools that I will need for the apprenticeship. Um, I have a lot of fond memories attending church, being there, being baptized, all of that stuff like that. And I am just very um, grateful for all the blessings that God has bestowed upon me. Thank you guys. My name is Kenna Lim. My future plans are to attend Central College in Pella and major in biology. Hi, I plan on staying here in town and going to Iowa Senior University with a major in music education and a minor in special education. I wanted to thank everyone for all of the support, especially with my situation and with Aria, who is back there. Um, but you guys have all been so supportive, and I'm very thankful for all of you, so thank you. the church where the kids, uh, they, they go, uh, they get confirmed, and they do press on, and then when they get a driver's license, we don't see them. <laughs> and you know who else was like that? Me. <laughs> yeah. Well, never, yeah. So, uh, thank you guys. We're so proud of you. We'll, Kenna, we won't make you come up. We'll give you your cross. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, come on. Blessings on you. We're so proud of the young lady you've become. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Let us stand and sing.
So just one last thing, I know you're standing, but I had a couple people express a concern that sometimes pastors leave a congregation after they get a Sabbath or a sabbatical, and um, a few things about that. Uh, Friends, it is uh, not, um, so I would say my net is absolutely full here and uh, full of meaning and purpose, and I, I love that we are fishing for people in the Bay of Mount Pleasant and um, the Lilly Foundation, Eli Lilly, who gave the grant, you, you sign a covenant that you will remain at the congregation for a minimum of one year after you take the Sabbath time because they know that pattern too, that uh, pastors get a break and they say, oh my gosh, what am I doing with my life? Da, 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 da. And so that, uh, this for me, this time away is about renewal and about centering, about learning how to go with the flow, letting go of some anxiety and pressure and, and learning to be and to be centered in the rhythms of God's spirit. And so that's, that's uh, my plan. And uh, Sarah and I love this community, the congregation, the care and love we receive, especially the care and love that Hudson receives here in the community. And uh, of course, we never know what the future brings, but as of right now, uh, it's time to eat and get renewed and be the church, all of us. So thanks be to God for calling us together to eat. Yeah. Friends, this place and have courage and hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. May the grace of God, the Lord our Jesus Christ, and the Creator of all be in you, known to you, and shine out through you. In Christ's name, amen.